Hello and welcome back to another tutorial video for Kenshi. My name is Tobel, and what I'm going to be covering today is combat and damage and how to heal yourself after the fact. So, I've got a the same squad we were just working with in the last video, and what we're going to do is get them into a bit of a scrap. Now, they actually do have some damage already, but that's fine. Let's just pretend they're completely healthy and nothing bad ever happened to them. So the first thing I'm going to do is point out a couple of tactics about combat. Combat is a wonderful way and relatively safe if you take some precautions. It is a relatively safe and effective way to raise your stats. Your attack, defense, strength, dex, and toughness, and dodge. Because when you're having combat happen, you have a chance to have all of those things improve. You increase toughness when you get hit and you increase the other stats when you effectively use them or just during the fight overall. I'm not sure where the exact mechanic comes into play, but they definitely do go up during combat or after combat. So, I like to do a couple things. The first thing I like to do is I like to have someone who's got quite a few first aid kits on them. Uh, do we have all the first aid kits given out? I think we do. Great. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell that person to go into passive mode and they have the medic command. So if you see here, we've got Heft as our medic. I'm gonna actually click her off the side of the area here. And I, then I have these river raptors. These are going to be my new practice buddies for today, and they might even kill me. River raptors can be pretty strong. However, if you're scouting out an enemy to fight, let's take a look. We're looking at the stat screen after we click on them. Uh, their overall limits on their limbs and their critical areas aren't as high as ours. Or they don't have all that much strength, dex, toughness, things like that. So they're okay. They definitely have some ability to cause us some damage, and they probably do have the numbers to uh, to knock us out. But I don't think they're going to cause us any permanent damage unless our medic can't rescue our uh, characters if they get knocked out, and uh, maybe our medic is under fire from the raptors. So we'll experiment, and I'll kind of talk through it and explain my thought process as we go. So, the rest of these characters are, we need to make sure that they're not on passive. I still have some options that are checked here from the last video. Uh, Thumper is still our ranged person, so they're going to be using uh, the ranged weapon. I do have a couple other folks still with the medic command. However, they don't have any medic equipment on their inventory, so they won't be able to do that. Okay, great. So, no one else is passive except for our doctor who is over here uh in the other area. Sorry, I actually unchecked that. So we'll have Heft over here off to the side. If you want to start a fight with a neutral party, and you see how my mouse is white, that means that th this is a neutral group. They're not going to attack you right off the bat, or let us let me put it this way. They're not currently aggressive towards you or your faction. There are some characters that if you get close near them, they will suddenly aggro your party because they realize, oh, hey, you're a target. I'm going to come fight you. So if we want to start a fight, I'm going to, for me, I'm going to start with one character, and I'm going to say attack unprovoked. I'm going to unpause, and as you notice, this entire group now is red to us. So this entire group has responded, and now they're in the goal of attacking enemies. Our characters are not quite aware of the threat. There they go. I gave them a couple more seconds. So I want to cover a couple more things here about the icons that are behind our characters' heads. If your background is completely red, this means that your characters are being aggressed and you're not paying attention to them. They're not on the screen right now. So as you can see, it's flashing red. The entire background behind Fall and Bard is flashing red. This is to help you know and realize that some characters are under attack and they might not be in your current view. The thick red lines means these characters are currently engaging in combat. They are actively trying to kill their enemies. So we're going to let the combat run until a couple people get hit. And it looks like Bard is in the lead, so I'll actually keep him selected and let him take a couple shots. Okay, a couple things you've noticed here. Our characters ran up and look like they've done some attacks. The green text is you're having attacks come off, right? You're, you're doing damage. The red text actually means we've received damage. And because it's such a high number, my theory is that Thumper just accidentally shot Tobel in the arm. 
So let's look at that and I'll, talk, I'll cover some of the damage here and what it means. So the first thing to notice is we have four of these symbols. This means that we're bleeding at a pretty heavy rate. You have a certain amount of blood in your system. It looks like, I think for humans that are just starting out the game, I think you're roughly around 75 or 76. I think that might go up as you get stronger. So right now we've already lost a good chunk of blood because we just took a freaking bolt to the arm. Thank you, Thumper, for your wonderful aim. In fact, I'm going to give you an order to go up on this damn hill and stop missing. All right, that'll happen when I unpause. So Tobel right now is experiencing extreme blood loss and his right arm has taken a good bit of damage. If your arm goes down or if any limb goes down below, I believe it's 100, that limb is rendered uh, useless until it's repaired. The other thing to keep in mind here, if you hover over this limb, it tells us that your wound is slowly getting worse. The rate at which your arm or your limb deteriorates is based on your toughness because it affects the wound degeneration speed. So our arm will continue to get worse. And by worse, I mean this number will keep ticking down. It will continue to get worse on its own until someone bandages it above a certain point. Now, and I do apologize, I don't have all the numbers in my head because uh, the last couple of patches might have changed these and I'm not really familiar offhand with what the extreme limits are. If this number goes extremely into the negative, and I'm thinking around either 100 or 150, you will lose the entire limb. It even could be all the way down to 200, negative 200. Uh, the limb will actually become completely useless it basically you've lost that arm either due to infection uh, due to it being completely chopped up and it will turn a bunch of X's to indicate that that is no longer present on your body you can however lose your limbs and still survive and you can in fact get prosthetics to replace the lost limbs that you have the other areas on your body are called critical areas if any of these areas get below a certain point, your character winds up getting knocked unconscious. So let's go ahead and see the unconscious part in action. We'll let somebody get knocked out and then take a look at their stats. First off, we do see Thumper responding to our command to go up here on the hill to get a better angle of shooting. And we're seeing that Tobel is getting his ass handed to him by all of these river raptors. You can immediately see if anyone gets knocked unconscious, by the way, because their name will fade to kind of a grayish color. Oh, they'll also have a nice, you know, fall down animation. But the other thing to keep in mind that I just saw that I can point out, our character just did a slash, kind of a wide slash, and it hit both of these two river raptors. So you can, in fact, damage multiple enemies with one hit. It looks like fall has already knocked out one enemy. So as you can see here, this river raptor has gone below, one, uh, below zero, at a on a critical part so they've been knocked unconscious they'll have an unconscious modifier for a while and unless they're able to let's take a look at their toughness their KO point is negative 16 so as long as no critical body part is below negative 16 they will regain consciousness after this timer runs out however I can tell you because this is getting worse as you can see those double negative uh, indicators here this will keep counting down through negative 16 so basically this river after is out for a while who's gonna get knocked out first still doing good well we're doing a lot better than I expected here okay bard just went down you see how his icons gray let's take a look at bard and see what's going on with him bard currently is experience a great deal of blood loss he's down to only 20 I don't know if you call it units uh, it's down to 20 blood and the three ticks indicate he's losing blood at a pretty steady rate nothing insane but it is pretty steady and I don't believe this will heal on its own sometimes bleeding will stop on its own but it has to be uh, above a certain tick or a certain rate his head and stomach these indicators are actually meaning he has previously been injured and bandaged so he actually took some old damage to his head and stomach that we had not healed up yet so this is not from the current fight the red here is from the current fight so his left arm and his right leg both took some damage during this fight but what knocked him out was his chest going below zero so he's unconscious for 307 seconds let's take a look again at that toughness K, uh, excuse me the KO point 
this is what's really important. When your characters take damage uh, below zero, oh, actually, nowadays, it tells you which your, where your character will die at. You will die at negative 100. If you look at the little information box, if our chest gets down to negative 100, your character will die. So after 300 seconds, if our, our character is basically, it's like, almost like you've been punched, you've been knocked out cold, okay? If our character is above our KO point, which is negative 14, they will regain consciousness on their own. If, however, they are not above that threshold, they will remain in a recovery coma until all of their critical stats are above zero. Okay, so that means that Bard, and you see how these ticks here are pointing this way. This means that this is going to continue to get worse. So we'll come back to Bard here in just a few seconds to see how this damage has progressed. Let's take a look at everyone else. Everyone's taking a good deal of bleeding damage. We actually may have someone die out of blood loss on this one. Now, I could, at this moment, you see how these enemies have kind of gone over to our other characters. We could go, and in fact, our medic is actually trying to rescue or perform her medic duties on Bard because she didn't have anything else going on. Thumper, meanwhile, has actually aggroed one of the uh, river raptors on her, so she's no longer really able to be an effective archer. So Heft is using this automatic medic role, and she's going to start bandaging in order of critical areas. So blood, head, stomach, chest in that order. Then she'll start working on the limbs. You can micro this to a point. You can only micro it to basically say, who's worse here, Tobal or Bard? Well, in this case, it kind of looks like Tobal because his blood level is very critically low. His chest is damaged worse than Bard as well. So if we wanted to, and the area was safe, we could have Heft try to medic Tobal back up first. And this is an option during combat. You can micromanage your medics and try to have them heal people up in the, in the middle of a fight. You also can have them heal up in the middle of combat. However, it's a little bit dangerous for your medic. So Heft is trying to bandage up Bard. I'll click on Bard here. So you can see that the blood portion has slowed down. She's still bandaging. Boom. Okay, so the bleeding has stopped. Now she's going to begin work on the chest. And you'll see that she's basically patching up and slowing down the damage rate at which the chest is taking damage. So as we've been watching Bard and Heft work, everyone else is basically getting knocked out. So we're seeing here that there's a couple inf uh, important information pieces. Because we're now at a very low uh, point, because this is actually going down by two ticks, the status of our character has changed to dying. This indicates that if you don't get medical attention soon, you will die, and the exclamation points are because of the stomach wound you've suffered. So Bard is basically stable enough, right? So he's no longer super far down on his chest. We're going to have Heft go over and first aid Geico. Let's take a look at Gecko, which is why I named someone Geico, because we already had a character named Gecko. Uh, Gecko is not too bad. They're a little bit damaged, and they're losing some blood, but they're not quite as critical as Geico is. Hand is also experiencing some blood loss and some damage to the chest, but again, not as critical as Gecko, or sorry, Geico. So, Geico is going to be restored to the point of being safe, right? So now the status has changed to unconscious, so it's not as critical as it was before. The interesting thing is, because Heft was never part of this initial aggression, because she was passive the whole time, she's not currently getting aggroed by our River Raptor friends. So, we're watching her patch up, again, in order of critical from blood, head, stomach, to chest, we're watching her patch up using these first aid, uh, basic first aid kits. There are different types of first aid kits, and they do have charges, so be aware that you could run out of charges mid-battle. So if you have a dedicated medic, you definitely want them to have a pretty decent supply of first aid kits. You also can take a look at the medic skill here under field medic. And this is basically how people um, respond, how they perform in terms of healing, how fast they heal people, and how effective it is. Let's look at everyone real quick and see if there's anyone else in a critical state. Uh, that's Fall. Fall is actually below the 100, or sorry, the zero limit for blood loss. And I don't know the actual bottom limit at which point you die out from blood loss. However, the one pip indicates that it's slowly bleeding out and it should stop bleeding to altogether by itself. The chest wound is bad though and it's getting worse, so they'll need a little bit of patching up. 
And now, Fall has the dying modifier. They're basically saying that if you don't get this checked out soon, you're going to die. I believe it's actually at negative 50 is when a character dies. Hand is okay. Thumper is also, actually Thumper is the closest to death because theirs is at negative 35. So again, the basic idea here is that when your character hits zero in any critical spot, they will get knocked unconscious. They're unconscious for a certain period. Part of that is based off of your toughness and some other factors. When that unconscious period is up, if any of your stats are above the KO point threshold, they will regain consciousness on their own. Un if they are lower than that threshold, they'll go into a recovery coma and they can't wake up until those criticals are above zero. So for example, right here, because Fall's KO point is negative 20 and he's sitting right at negative 21, or sorry, 20 and it, went, it rolled over to 21, he now is going to go into a recovery coma until everything's at zero. Do I have anyone who's coming out of an unconscious state yet? Nope, everyone's still in a pretty deep unconscious point. So this looks bad at first glance, right? Everyone's sitting here bleeding on the ground. Uh, we only killed a couple of these river raptors, and everyone's beat, you know, all to, to blood and tarnation here. However, this was not a bad fight for us because we, number one, mostly survived, right? We still have a couple people to fix up. Thankfully, we still have a couple first aid kits, but we've gotten some skill ups here. We did get some points in attack defense. Our characters got beat up, so they all got a little bit more experience with toughness. So this it's not necessarily bad a bad thing to lose, and you really do want to get some hits in the game. You want to take some damage in order to build up your toughness. So I would encourage you to be okay, get comfortable with losing some fights. The easiest way to do this is to pick your battles. So if you see a group of starving bandits out there, well, they're going to be a little bit better to fight rather than, uh, say, either the river raptors or a bunch of sand ninjas who have you know tons of damage and who can literally cut your arms off in one shot. So you want to pick and choose your battles, find enemies that you can... Uh, you know, possibly beat, but if they if they beat you up, you don't really want to die from it. You want to be able to recover through the use of a medic. Okay, so I'm patching up hand now. And again, blood, head, stomach, chest. And that order is how your medic will fix people up. I don't see anyone else in super critical state. So I'll let this run for a minute. We're just going to let Heft do their automated medic decision. So basically because Heft has this medic job, she will continue to try to medic whoever she can until her supplies run out, which might be pretty soon. That's another thing. If you're going to be approaching this tactic where you, you know, you pick a fight with a, a, a group of bandits, make sure you've got enough supplies to cover your repairs, you know, your, your recovery rate. Let's see if anyone's going to come out of, oh no, Fall went back into the dying state. I think I just saw this. At, it's actually at 100 is when this kills you, when this is down to 100. So I'm not too worried about that just yet. All right, so Geico is almost done with their unconscious period. However, if you notice that their stomach is at negative 21, their KO point is negative 12. So they're not going to recover when the unconscious timer runs out. They have gone into the recovery coma. So you've suffered too much damage. You won't be getting up again until all critical body parts have recovered above zero. So that's why it's so important for your characters to build up their toughness because it directly affects this KO point. It means that your characters can get up again and continue the fight if it's a very long battle or just get up again and try to move over to a place where they can either heal themselves or start to recover. Because right now, the situation we're looking at is one character is able to move, but everyone else is stationary. So they're going to have to lay there on the ground until they recover on their own or until you get enough people up to start carrying them to a city. And we're actually close to a um, neutral city here so we can take them and drop them off to recover. Okay, so Bard has just had, and Gecko have both had their timers go up or finish on this unconscious area. Is anyone else still unconscious? So right here, Thumper is about to regain consciousness. They would normally, however, because their KO point is below 
it's negative 33, their KO threshold is negative 13, they're going to stay unconscious for a while. So Bard's up. Bard's actually a little bit wounded still. Uh, I wonder if Heft has any medkits left. They do. Okay. Uh, who are you working on? You're working on Gecko? Let's, okay, you've got it enough. I'm going to wait till it says it's okay. There is a point which it'll just, okay, so right here, it needs bandaging. There will, There is a basically a point where it stops going down on its own. Um, we just ran out of bandages, though, so I think Bard's going to continue to get worse. Now, the interesting part is Bard is now below their threshold, but he's not taking any additional damage. So he's kind of like on, you know, on uh, light on his feet, right? He's, he's probably a little woozy, but he's still able to take commands, even though he's below his threshold because he recovered consciousness before that threshold was hit. So we're going to talk about recovering and healing up from a fight. What I'm going to do is have my character start picking everyone up. So I told Bard to pick up Tobel. Heft is going to pick up Thumper. And Gecko is going to pick up Geico because that seems appropriate. So we only have three characters right now who are awake. So we're going to use them to pick up our characters that are unconscious and take them into the town. Hopefully no one's going to bleed out on us while we're waiting. Let's see. Fall. Yep, your damage is going to be too severe. In hand, you're also in your recovery coma for just a little bit. So we're taking these characters into the city. And I'm going to show you about uh, how to recover from a fight. And basically what you do to get better. It's not really that hard. Uh, you can have this option in most cities. Most cities have a bed. Uh, a bed is will multiply your recovery rate by times 8. And actually... If we click on this bed here, it tells you that, I thought it did, I think we're, oh, it's because we're actually not in the building yet. Let's go inside of this bar. Come on, everyone, let's go. Okay, I'm going to use the page up to go upstairs. And now I'm going to click on the bed. And you can see that the healing bonus is times eight. So whatever the natural healing rate is that's applied to the game, it's multiplied by eight when you put someone on a bed. So you can see here we've got, and I apologize, it's, it's dark, it, is, it did turn night here. So it's a little hard to see, but we're going to have Tobel right-click the bed. Oh, sorry, I've got the wrong character selected. Tobel's unconscious. Bard is the one who's carrying him. So Bard is going to right-click the bed and place Tobel on it. Same thing with Gecko. Same thing with Heft. And then you could still have these characters sleep by then having them click on new beds. So, well, I'll tell you what. We have two more characters to save. Let's send Gecko and Heft back out to our other two folks who are still recovering way out in the in the distance but if you notice all of our characters are nice and sound asleep recovering from their damage uh, a little worried about bard because he's actually not been healed up but it looks like it's recovering on its own if you notice that just went from negative 14 to negative 13 so he will recover but he would recover at a faster rate if all of his damage was bandaged up what happens at this point is the game will very slowly start to replace this bandaged section. Or I guess it's, um, I guess bandage is probably the best word for it. Yellow represents wounds that have been bandaged or a first aid kit has been used on. Green represents your natural healthy state. So very slowly the number will change to represent healing taking place and fixing, you know, repairing the skin, repairing the tendon damage, whatever it happens to be. So this will increase as your characters are recovering on the bed. If you notice here, Gecko, or sorry, Geico, is in the recovery coma, but as soon as this hits the zero point, they'll be able to stand up and move around. All right, so I'm going to speed things up. We're going to have Heft and Gecko pick up our last two survivors of the great River Raptor Massacre of 2018. And we'll have them head back into town. Don't bother me right now. Thank you. Sometimes your uh, lonely or your uh, your roaming patrols here can bother you because they get a little lonely on the road, perhaps you know, but uh, they can harass you just a, just a bit. We don't want any of that right now. We're trying to recover, so we'll bring these last couple folks into the inn. And if you notice, I'm actually a little bit tight on money, so we're I think we're just going to have enough to get everybody into a bed and to recovering. One kind of annoying bug is. When your characters come out of their recovery coma, they sometimes stand up on their own instead of continuing to rest on the bed. Because now if I try to have them rest on the bed, okay, never mind. 
I didn't get charged a second time. They just basically woke up and said, hey, I'm awake. Uh, but they were able to go back on the bed without basically buying and renting a new bed. So that's nice. Last thing I'm going to do is let's have Gecko sleep over. We can't actually because this is a owned mattress as opposed to a bed. I, again, I apologize for the darkness here. It just happens to be that it's now nighttime in the game. So it's super hard to see anything. Thumper has regained consciousness, but he's still injured. So I'm going to have Thumper get back on the bed. Same thing with Tobel. He's regained consciousness, but he's still very wounded, so we'll have him get back on the bed too. I'm going to have Heft come over to, I think most of the stores are closed, but I can see the sun, so it's about to come daytime. When it gets into the daytime, I'm going to run over and find some healing kits to try to improve the speed at which our characters are recovering. But that's the general gist of it. Combat, basically, now that wasn't more, that wasn't as tactical of combat. That was more of what happens during combat. What do the numbers represent? How do you, you know, stop your characters from dying a horrible death, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So generally speaking, the cycle is you pick a fight with somebody or someone picks a fight with you. You duke it out. You either win or lose. And then you have to go sleep on a bed to sleep it off. You can have field a uh, camp bed out in the middle of a field this increases your uh, heal rate by four so it's not as efficient as a bed in a city however if you like to have your band of travelers go out and about and stay out of cities you can in fact have these ready to go if you have the sleeping bag materials and you can pick those up uh, i think it's from this vendor here which is the adventurer vendor i thought this was like a backpack vendor for the longest time but it's actually adventurers so as you can see here he's got some sleeping bags for sale so we could buy these and then roll them out to make uh, a sleeping mat to do a little bit of healing we have just enough money to be able to afford this standard first aid kit so we're gonna grab that and I'm gonna come back over to the inn and finish patching up the rest of our allies who are not quite patched up yet to include I think Tobel and Gecko or Geico. Yeah, it's Gecko. So immediately, as soon as Heft got back, she's starting to finish the medic jobs because she sees people who are wounded and she realizes that she has a med kit that she can use. So that's the general idea. So I hope that was useful for you. Um, I would encourage you to pick your first couple fights in this game very carefully, uh, but don't be afraid of you know, getting stuck in a little bit. This the best advice I can offer is make sure you micromanage your troops so that you always have someone around to recover and heal you once all the uh, you know blood is starting to dry up and the enemies are wandering away. It's a little more dangerous if your medic is in the fight at the start because they might get aggroed and be involved in that fight. So you might have to have them run away or what have you. You also you can kind of have your medics dash in during combat to try to you know staunch any bleeding or to stop any degradation of wounds uh, if your characters are in the middle of fighting you could in fact if you had your medic say this these two guys here were fighting right next to each other we could have for example geico come over here take over the fight for a minute pull gecko out and then have our medic heal them up temp like real quick and then send them back into the fight so there are ways to micromanage your battle it's kind of fun to do it's just a matter of whether you like to just let them go crazy or if you like to try to micro every single battle. It's going to be up to you. It's a personal preference. But I do hope that this was informative for you. If you have any questions about the combat and health system, let me know. I will probably include more combat discussions when I do a Let's Play of Kenshi. That way I can kind of talk and explain why I'm doing some decision making. I didn't really cover Thumper and their range damage too much, but I think uh, range damage is one of the more stronger aspects of the game that have been added recently because she was doing close to 70 damage per shot. The only problem was she wound up pegging Tobel in the arm and not being all that super helpful. So we can discuss this later on, probably in a Let's Play, where we you know go in depth about why we're having someone attack someone else and what the different tactics are in the game. But as a new player, I hope this is uh, at least something that you can take with you and explore and uh, feel a little more confident in the fighting system. 
Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any comments, please leave them in the section below, and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to learn as part of a tutorial video, also leave that in the comments, and I'll do my best to include that in the next coming set of tutorial videos. My name is Topo, and thank you so much for watching.